your name Worthy is your name Hallelujah Oh yeah. Hallelujah He's the Holy One. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the Great I Am. He is worthy to be praised. Come on, clap your hands right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the Great I Am. It's a simple song. Come on, right where you are. You can sing it with this. Oh. Come on, sing it. He is the King of Kings. He's the whole 
Hallelujah. Hey, good morning, Rosier family. It's Pastor Donaldson. Listen, I'm so excited about the word today. I think you're going to be tremendously blessed. But before we go into the word, you know we always honor God in and through our giving. That's right. It's giving time. Last week I talked about the fact that I understand that all of us have obligations. I'm not naive. We have kids in college. We got electric bills and car notes and house payments and all those things. But if we want the word of God to go forth, all of us have to take a piece of our resources and pull them together so that we can do all of the wonderful work that God has called us to do. That's right. That's why you'll find us everywhere. We're on TV. We're on radio. We're on social media. We're everywhere. Why? Because we want the word everywhere the people are. And in order to do that, it takes finances. It does. There's no way around it. But here's what I've learned. It doesn't take one person giving a gargantuan amount of money. It just takes a lot of us sowing our resources and bringing them together. And so today, if you want to join us in this pursuit, you want to see people's lives change, you want us to be able to reach people wherever they are, then simply partner with us. Well, how do you do that, Pastor? It's easy. Just give your best offering today. And you can give it digitally. You don't have to leave. You don't have to mail anything unless you choose to. Just grab your cell phone, grab your text app, and text this, this short code and text the amount of money that you want to give. That's right. Just type 84321 in the two box on your text message app. And in the message box, text the dollar sign and the amount of money you want to give. Press send. If you're registered, that's all you have to do. If you're not registered, it'll send you some information back. You fill that out, send it back to us, and then from that point on, you're registered. And you can simply write the dollar sign and the amount that you want to give, send it to 84321, bam, press send, and you're done. It's just that simple. But of course, if you say, Pastor, I don't embrace this technology. I don't know all this stuff. That's fine, too. You can mail it right here to our church. The address is on the screen. Or you can drop it off right here at our main location. Listen, we want to say thank you for everything you sow into this ministry. I mean that from the depths of my heart. Nothing is too large. Nothing is too small. We appreciate everything. Now, listen, buckle your seatbelts, get ready for the word, and now enjoy our music ministry as they bring us right into the very presence of God. And then next, the word. See you soon. Lord, I will lift my eyes to the hills, knowing my Oh! 
be in times of the the storms. Somebody lift your hands and say, "You are, you are the source of my strength. You are the strength." your name Jesus because you've been mighty good and honored oh thank you Jesus hey and I lift my hands in total praise to family. What a blessing it is to be found in the house of worship. I pray that your family is well. I pray that you've had a fruitful week and I pray that you're hungry for the word. That's right. The word has the ability to change any circumstance and any situation. Listen, grab your family, grab your Bibles. Let's get together and let's enjoy the word together. This morning, The word will come from Genesis chapter number 37, verses 26 through 28. We've been in this series called Total Commitment, and I want to continue in that vein this morning. And so if you would grab your Bibles and turn to Genesis 37, 26 through 28. The Bible says, Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. How kind of them. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. Well, family, I want to use for a subject this morning, 
the PPP plan. That's right, the PPP plan. I know when you hear the words or the letters PPP, you automatically think about the Paycheck Protection Plan that was instituted during COVID. But that's not what I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk this morning about the three P's that will take you to purpose. That's right. I want to talk about persisting and perseverance. I want to talk about positioning and I want to talk about prospering. When I think about our text and all the challenges that Joseph faced, I not only think about Joseph, but I think about people like Maya Angelou, one of our modern day heroes who just received one of the highest honors that she could possibly receive. That's right. She's the first black lady to be put on the back of the quarter. And I would assume that most people would look at her life and say, man, how wonderful must her life had been. But the truth is, most people only know half her story. They only know the glory. But the truth is, they don't really know the story. When I began to research her life, I found some things out and I found out that her life was very similar to Joseph, the one that we're studying. Let me give you a few facts because I want you to have some biblical understanding, but I also want you to have some modern day understanding and examples as well. Maya Angelou was born in St. Louis, Missouri. That's right. When she was three, her parents got divorced. She went to live with her grandmother in Arkansas And at the age of eight, she was raped. And when she told her uncles what had happened, her uncles killed the man who raped her. Afraid of the power of her own voice, she became mute and silent for five long years. For five years, she said nothing at all. After that, she began to sing and she began to do poetry. And she began to dance and she began to audition for theaters. But at 16, she had a baby and so she had to put it all on hold. Looking to support her child, she began to work as a waitress. She worked in nightclubs. She got entangled in drugs and prostitution and actually worked at a strip club. That's right. The great Maya Angelou worked at a strip club. The fact of the matter is, she was actually discovered at the strip club. Somebody from the theater saw her and referred her to somebody else. She auditioned and got a role in this show called Porgy and Bess and toured 22 countries. After that, she moved to New York and became a part of the civil rights movement. And after that, she moved with a boyfriend to Egypt. After that relationship ended, she moved to Ghana with her son, and her son was involved in a car accident, and they stayed there for a while, and she ended up writing for the African Review, and that's where her talents flourished. When she returned back to the United States, she had a book called I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. That's right, that and four more volumes. And then she began to write poetry and she ended up reciting a poem at President Clinton's inauguration and received countless awards. And her life was amazing, but all of the ups and downs brought her to the point where she finally blossomed into the person that she was called to be. Watch this, I got a word for you today. First thing I want you to know is that if you're watching this program, I don't think it's a coincidence. But number two, I want you to understand that the power to change whatever you're going through is right here in you. Here's what you must know. Everything that ends well doesn't always start well. Oh, that's good preaching right there. Everything that ends well doesn't always start start well. And what you have to do is learn how to persist. In fact, my first point today is by all means persist. That means keep going. That means persevere. That means don't stop. That means don't allow anything to stagnate your progress because all of it is a part of your journey. Now watch this. When we look at the life of Joseph, we look at the life of people like Maya Angelou, Most people would say, man, they went through. But the question is, did they go through or were they going to? Because there's a difference. 
There are many people watching this. You're saying, man, I'm going through it, man. But what would your life be like if you said, you know what? I'm not going through it. I'm going to it. And I'm only going through it to get to it. In other words, everything in my life has purpose. And if you would begin to see your life like that, how would your life change? Maybe you could persist a little better. Maybe you could persevere just a little better. Maybe you would understand the things that you are encountering are simply positioning you so that you can prosper as it relates to your purpose. So watch this, family. Be careful that you don't allow what was designed to position you to poison you. Yeah, don't let what was designed to position you poison you because you don't understand its role in your life. I'm going to show you some heavy stuff today. Watch this. What if you were going through something to get to something that was a part of your purpose? Now, let's get clear. Last week, we talked about Joseph, and we talked about his dream. But I want to continue to build on that. A dream is simply a new picture. God gave Joseph a dream. God gave Joseph a new picture. Now watch this. I want you to understand that a picture has power. What do you mean, Pastor? It has the power to reverse whatever you're going through. That's why God gives you a picture when he's pulling you towards purpose. Now watch this. If friction can produce electricity, then that means that electricity can produce friction. And if motion can produce heat, then heat can produce motion. Watch this. If you take water and you introduce it to freezing temperatures, it can produce ice. That means if you take the same ice and, and, and introduce it to hot temperatures, it'll become water again. Watch this. It means that if effect, if cause can produce effect, then effect can produce cause. It means that if action can cause reaction, then reaction can cause action. Where are you going, Pastor? What I'm trying to show you is if your bad circumstances cause you to have a bad picture in your mind, watch this, a new picture can change your circumstances. Oh, that's better than you shouted. You ought to be shouting right there in your sanctuary, right there in your kitchen. What I'm telling you is if God gives you a new picture, and you embrace the picture, it has the power to change your circumstances, just like bad circumstances sometimes have the power to change your picture. It works both ways. Watch this. Can I park here for a minute? Not only must you understand that every picture has the power to change, but you must understand with every picture, there comes a pregnancy and with every pregnancy, there's a gestation period. A gestation period, a waiting period. Watch this. When a person becomes pregnant, you don't see the baby right away. There's a period. There's a gestation period. And watch this. With a chicken, it's 21 days. With a human, it's nine months. With an elephant, it's 39 months. And most people don't get this. This is why people stop going to the gym. It's why people lose their commitments right at the beginning of the year. It's because they don't see immediate change. Watch this. You can't go to the gym one day and come home and get in front of the mirror and start flexing and asking what effect that one workout had on your body. The truth of the matter is you can go a week and come back and won't see a difference. Sometimes you can go a month and come back and won't see a difference. But just because you don't see a difference right away does not mean things aren't changing. Little gradual changes are happening, and if you persevere and stick to it, you're going to see major changes in the near future, but you got to be willing to persist through the gestation period. Watch this. That's why you got to learn how to hold on to the picture that God showed you, even though you're going through challenging and adverse situations. Habakkuk chapter number two says this, two and three says, then the Lord replied, write the revelation, write the vision and make it plain on tablets so that they that hear it may run. It says for the, watch this, revelation is for an appointed time. It speaks of the end. 
it will not lie. Though it lingers, it will certainly come. Now watch this. What is it saying? It's saying that every vision has an appointed time. When God gives you a vision, there is an appointed time for it to come to fruition. And if you give up in the midst of adversity and challenges, then you'll miss the fruition of the thing that God promised. This is good. Sometimes you got to learn how to persist, persevere, keep going, understanding that God has taken me somewhere and I'm not just going through arbitrary things. God is not playing games with my life. God has a plan and a purpose and he knows exactly what he's doing because when God gives me a picture and I submit the picture to him and say, God, your will be done, he begins to put me on the pathway to purpose. But the problem is most of us panic over God's positioning. My second point is don't panic over positioning. What do you mean? Joseph's purpose was in Egypt. His purpose was in Egypt, so God had to get Joseph to Egypt. And God knows how to get you where you need to be, and watch this, and prepare you along the way. And so many people get discouraged because they pray and say, God, bless me. They get discouraged because they say, God, help me to walk in my purpose and my call. And then all of a sudden they lose a job or they lose a relationship or they lose something they think is vital, something that they think they can't live without. But they don't understand when you ask God to put you in purpose, God starts removing things that are not that are not a part of your purpose. And many times we freak out over it because we think I can't live without that I can't live without him can't live without her but here's a heavy question what if that's not a part of your purpose what am I saying what if the job that you're working right now is not a part of your purpose and here's a heavy question if God told you to leave it would you walk away if God told you to leave a fruitless relationship that you've been nurturing for years Still hadn't gotten married. If God told you to walk away, would you walk away? No, oftentimes we won't walk away because we say, well, a little something is better than nothing. Watch this. But if God takes it away, you have no choice but to trust. Stay right there. I'm telling you, watch this. If God tells you to move to a different state, would you move? If God told you to move to a different country, would you move? Watch this. God sends Joseph to Egypt. He doesn't send him with a first class ticket, but he will get a first class education. Watch this. Sometimes we want to go with a first class ticket. We want to go with all the creature comforts. We want to go with all the things lined up. But no, sometimes God sends you through things to educate you, not just so that you'll be comfortable. Watch this. And here's the caveat. The brothers think that they're getting rid of him when they're only positioning him. This is heavy. The brothers think that they're getting rid of him when they're only positioning him. They say, let's see what becomes of his dream. We're tired of this dreamer. We're tired of this dude thinking that he's better than us. We're tired of this dude thinking that he's going to accomplish all this great stuff and we're not going to do anything. We're, ti- we're going to get rid of him once and for all and let's see what happens to his dream. And watch this. When you consider all the haters in your life, you got to think about this. What they're actually doing is investing in my advancement. And sometimes people who hate you help you more than people that love you. Yeah, because people that love you won't push you into your destiny because they don't want to hurt you. But the the haters don't care about it. They'll push you right into your destiny thinking that they're leading you to your demise when they're actually leading you to your advancement. That's why I always tell you, you ought to celebrate the haters in your life. Everybody plays a role. Now watch this. Genesis 37, 28 through 36 says this. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. They took him to Egypt. His purpose was in Egypt. Even though he got sold out, he was still in his purpose. His purpose was to get to Egypt. Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat and dipped it 
in blood. They took the ornate robe back to their father and said, we found this. Examine it to see whether it's your son's robe. He recognized it and said, it is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So the father wept for him. Watch this. 36 says, meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. This is heavy. They were making excuses for his absence. They hated him. They hated his dream. And watch this. They were willing not only to hurt him, but they were willing to hurt their father just to get him. That's heavy when you think about it. How the father loved and missed the son, but they were willing to cover up their own insecurities with their brother's kidnapping. They were willing to sell him out just so that they could rest securely. Watch this. Never be so insecure about another person's talent that you're willing to sow wickedness. Watch this. You will never be happy sowing misery into somebody else's life. God is not mocked, the Bible says. As a man sow it, so shall he reap. In other words, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and you cannot sow misery and reap joy. Now watch this. I want you to see this. In our text, they've gone through great measures to hurt him, but God has kept him. In fact, God has used them to be a blessing to him, to position him. 39 says, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar and the Egyptians, who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. When the master saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in, the eyes, in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and entrusted everything he owned to Joseph. Boy, this is heavy right here. I want to show you something. First of all, I talked to you about persisting. If Joseph would not have persisted, he never would have found Potiphar. He never would have ended up in Egypt, the place of his purpose. Not only did he persist, but he went through the positioning. He went through the positioning, understanding that God must have something for me if God moved me from one place to the other. Even if it looks like I'm losing something, I got to be gaining something greater. And if you would adopt that attitude in your life, I'm telling you, whatever happens in your life, you will have an expectation to prosper. We'll talk about that in a moment. But now he ends up in Potiphar's house, and the Bible says that the hand of the Lord is on him, that the Lord's blessing is on him. What does that mean? That means that he has this mindset to prosper. When you have a mindset to prosper and God's hand is on your life, it does not matter where a person puts you, you still will prosper. They'll put you at the bottom and you'll keep rising to the top. They'll move you to this place and you'll rise to the top. It does not matter where you put me or place me. If God's hand is on my life and my mindset is in the right place, I'll always rise to the pinnacle. Let me prove it. Psalms 1, 1 through 3 says this. And I'll just be able to begin to touch this today. It says, blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord that he meditates on day and night. 
He will be like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. Whatever he does, he prospers. Somebody ought to say it. Watch this. When I'm in the will of God, whatever I do prospers. Whenever I'm walking in the purpose of God, whatever I do prospers. Come here, somebody. Whenever I'm in the midst of God's plan for my life, whatever I do prospers. But what I've got to be able to do is I've got to hold the picture while I'm going through the ups and downs, while I'm going through the vicissitudes of life, while I'm going through the tosses and the turns and the challenges and the peaks and the valleys. I've got to hold on to the picture because watch this. The joy of birth will erase the horror of labor. Oh, that's better than you shouted. The joy of birth will erase the horror of labor. What does that mean? That means that when I come into my place of purpose, when I begin to walk in what God called me to walk in, when I begin to prosper wherever you put me, I'll forget about all of the pain that I went through to get there and I'll rejoice and re- I'll rejoice in the birth of the baby. I want you to think about that. The Bible talks about this, that when a mother has a baby, that when she looks at that baby, Even though she went through all of that labor, she went through all of that pain, she went through all of those challenges, she forgets about everything that she went through because her love for the baby and the joy of birth erases the pain and the horror of labor. I came to tell somebody you can't quit because, watch this, what you're going to give birth to is going to be so great that it's going to erase all of the pains of the stuff that you had to go through to get to where you have gotten. It's a powerful message, family. So what I've got to do is I've got to persist. Maya Angelou, Dr. King, Joseph, the Gideons, Take biblical examples. Take real life practical examples. There's no person who's gotten to a great place that didn't have to persist through some valleys. And if you're watching me today, you might be in a valley right now. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That means that God is in you and God has a plan and his thoughts are greater than your thoughts. His ways are greater than your ways. And when God gives you a picture, you have to put it on him and say, God, take me to my purpose. And God, if it means that I have to go through some peaks and some valleys and deal with some haters and some betrayals and and all kinds of things, where you're bringing me to is going to be so great that one day, I'm going to realize that everything I went through made me who I am. So today, as you watch this program, be encouraged. If you have not given your life to God, today would be a great day to do it. It's not difficult. It's not hard. All you have to do is say, God, come into my heart. Be king of my life. From this day on, I'm your child. Have your way in my life. If you want to join our church, It's not difficult. It's easy. Just simply send us a direct message, call our church, and we'll be happy to connect you with the family. And watch this, family. Don't forget to connect with us on social media. That's right, Rose Hill Baton Rouge, Rose Hill Church. We've got every form of social media now. We even have a TikTok account, TikTok. We've got Instagram, Twitter, we've got Facebook, we have it all. In fact, follow me as well. Instagram, Danny M. Donaldson. Every week we're releasing videos, encouraging things, and we're going to be releasing more and more. So that's why we're encouraging you to follow us on social media. We not only want to bless you on Sundays, but we want to bless you all week long. And we're going to start giving you more and more content. Make sure you go to YouTube. Subscribe to YouTube. We've got everything covered. We've got radio. We've got television. We've got it all covered. You should be able to see us somewhere. 
We want to thank you for partnering with us. We want to thank you for watching our broadcast today. We hope that you were blessed by the word. Come back next week. I'm taking my time walking through this text, giving you little bite-sized pieces at a time so that you can digest it and so that you can grow and become the person that God has destined for you to be and that this year, 2022, is the best year you'll ever have. Listen, God loves you. We love you. Have a great day. Can't wait to see you next week.